So I was wondering the other day, exactly how does chat work with Gemini and for that matter with Bart? Welcome back everyone. It's Linda again, and this is more Gemini API shenanigans. What we know about Gemini is that it's multimodal. We can send it text, we can send images, and we can send text in images to the model by sending messages to the Gemini Pro or the Gemini Vision model. What about chat? How exactly does chat work? Does it hold a session? You know, I mean, how do we know what was said previously? Or actually, how does the model know what was said previously? And for that matter is, how do we end a conversation? How do we start a new one? How do we, how do we save a conversation so that we can, for example, with, with Bard, you can, you can store previous chats up here and then reload them later. How does that all work? So I decided to do a bit of digging around to see if I couldn't figure out exactly how this all worked. So the first thing I was thinking is that we should look at the actual API calls. Now I did a bit of digging around in the documentation and I wasn't actually able to find the pure rest call for these different methods for Gemini and the generative language API. And you just go ahead and create your prompt like you normally would, and then you can go up here, get code. And what's really nice is that uh, I can get the code for curl. And by getting the code for curl, it goes ahead and it gives me my, uh, my rest call so that I can actually see the pure calls that we are sending to the API because yes, the client libraries are nice and the client libraries are great and they make everything fun for us, but I don't know. I want to know how stuff works. I want to know what's going on in the back end. And I just like, I like to know, I, I, I don't know. I like to know. So inquiring minds want to know. So now we know what a chat one, uh, a, a regular text one looks like. Let's try the chat prompt. Now the chat prompt is slightly different because you have to say the user says, and then the bot says. So with the chat prompt, the user says one thing and then the model says something else. And this is how a chat prompt works, right? You, it's like it goes back and forth, right? So to get the code for this, again, it doesn't look like the same code as the other one did. So you check over and curl, we can get the rest one. And now we are going to go over and compare the two, two and see what the actual difference is between these two calls. All right, so all I did here was I copied that curl code out and I put it into basically notepad because I found it was just easier to put it into notepad and then we could go ahead and and look at it so as we if we if we ignore all of this standard stuff which is basically just the the configurations for the api call and the safety settings what we find here is that we're making a call to the generate context endpoint and then we're sending it the model name of gemini pro all right, so this is the model for Gemini Pro. We can check over on the actual body here. The only difference, the only thing we see in the body that actually is relevant to the actual text call. Now remember, this is a single text call, is that we are sending contents and then with the parts and then the text is the text that we're sending, right? So that's pretty straightforward. Now, if we go ahead and check the chat call. So now what we have here is the code for the, from the chat that we got out of AI studio. And then what we can see is that we're still making a call to the same endpoint. 
with the same model name. So the endpoint can accept both text calls and chat calls. Okay, so that's interesting. So what happens to our context? Now, if we check the context window here, what we're seeing is that each section or, or each part of a conversation is sent as a single context. Hello? Contents. Okay, it's a single content, all right? Apparently Google is really bad at naming this stuff as well. So this is a conversation that's going back and forth. First the user says test, then the model responds with test, and then the user says import something else here. Again, I didn't change any of this, I just left it basically the same. So this just goes, so this shows that a conversation goes to the same endpoint as a single call. The only difference here is we're sending more than one and we're sending a role this time. This way the AI knows that who made this statement, right? So in actuality, when we look at this, a conversation or a chat with the AI, it's not a session. It's a single call that you are sending to the AI, but you are just adding extra information so that it knows what the history of the conversation was. That's all we're sending. Now, why is this an issue? Well, if you think about I me mean, right now, Gemini is free, or at least the part of it that I'm using is free. The more information that you send during your call in the future is going to cost you more. So if you're holding on a conversation with a chat bot, the history, the length of the history is going to increase with the length of the time you are holding on the conversation. And I suspect that this is why I have noticed in the past with both ChatGTP and BARD that even though you are holding on a conversation with it and you may have said something up here in the top of the conversation that the sky is blue, it seems to forget some of the stuff further down. And that's probably because we're not actually sending the full conversation because in the end, it's going to increase the amount of data that we are sending per each call exponentially, because every time you send some, every time you send one request, the next request will actually include both your request and the response from the AI. So things are going to increase rather quickly if your conversation gets too long. So, I saw a question over on, um, I can't remember if it was over on the Discord server or if it was over on Sta uh, Stack Overflow. Well, how do you end a conversation? Well, the easiest way to end a conversation is to just delete everything in context and then you're starting a new conversation. Um, again, how could you save a conversation? We just store the, the JSON string from this to the previous conversation and then you can reload it again at any time you want, which is, which is fine, which is very elegant, I guess, in a way. But again, it's not streaming. And I mean, we, we all know that the length of time that it takes Gemini to return with some of the responses can get pretty extensive. So it's probably going to, you know, get longer as you are adding more history context to your chat. Now, I went ahead and um, as per normal, I decided to code this up, uh, a sample code of how to get this to work in Python. Because again, the history is not re remembered by the AI itself, which means that you need to store a, a conversation history in your application someplace. I'm storing it in memory because I was just testing with Python. Technically speaking, you could store it, you know, uh, into a database and then just have it running that way, or you could store it to a file and then reload the file all the time. That's, that's entirely up to you how you would do it. So let's go over to PyCharm and have a look at the actual Python code to uh, hold on a chat conversation with Gemini. 
Okay, so here we are over in PyCharm. Now, this is the same project that I have up on GitHub. Um, I basically just added it to my Gemini webcam app project, basically because I don't know, might as well keep everything in one place, right? And I may add this to the UI at some point, which could be fun to get back and forth chat with the UI. But for now, this is what we got, okay? Now, if you want to run just this file, you can do what I did, which is to said just, just, just this file and it'll run just the file. Or you could just do, I don't know if you want to do a command line, you could do uh, Python and then Gemini chat pipe and, and it'll run at the same time. This uses the same API key that I created for the, um, the Gemini webcam project. So you, if you, if you're using the, if you've used this before, it should still work because you're just loading it from the E and B bar that you've already got set up. Um, I added a, a, a couple of, I've, I've actually updated this project a little bit. I did some refactoring, cleaned it up, uh, basically because I'm worried they're going to start changing model names and stuff. So I've declared, um, the model name for the chat. I declared a, a variable over in my ENB bar called uh, chat model. And that's because the other one, the other code I had used model slash um, and then Gemini Pro, whereas this code only uses uh, Gemini Pro for the model name. So it they're changing stuff. So I figured let's just have an ENB bar because then we can just change stuff nicely. Um, this is the standard, again, the standard configuration code, safety settings. We're not going to go through that because it's just, honestly, I copied it and, and we're going to leave it like that. Now we are using, again, Python. We can, you can do this in PHP. You can do it in the other languages if we want. It's up entirely up to you. Now I am going to create a new, uh, gener generative model, right? Again, same code. Now I created a, a couple of little helper uh, methods here to make life easier for us. Let's skip those for now and go directly down to the main, do not pass go. Um, and here what I've added loads of comments for you because I want you to be able to understand how to do this. You don't, you know, feel free to add comments to my, my YouTube videos and ask questions because um, Honestly, the algorithm loves it. So if you please comment below, but otherwise just read the comments because they'll, they'll um, I try to help you as much as I can so that you don't need to ask me why something's not working or what something does. Read the comments, read the comments or comment below and help me with the algorithm. I don't know. But anyways, so basically what I'm doing is I am storing the conversation history because remember we need to resend the previous conversation history every time we make a chat call, right? Um, I've added a couple of simple things here. Um, first of all, if you type exit, it shuts it down. I don't know, rather than continuing to run on forever, which it can, which is actually what it'll do because this is a while true. It's just going to keep running. It's just going to keep listening to the user until somebody types exit or you hit control C and then it'll stop as well. So, the first thing this does is it displays a, um, actually, why don't we run this? And then we can, we can, we can actually watch it run. So we should be, able okay. So now, uh, now we've got the chat window here. So we can, we can, we can watch stuff running side by side and we can explain the code as we go because everybody likes that. There we go. Look, we made everything pretty. Okay. So what are we doing? Well, the very first thing that happens is it prompts the user using a little colon because I don't know, let's use a colon. Um, so then we can ask Gemini or just like you would Bard, we can ask it questions. Um, so if I say, I only, because it can get long. So let's, let's keep these requests short. Um, write me a story about a car, but you only can use, I don't know, 
you know, we'll do short and sweet. Write me a, write me a really short story. And then we go ahead and we ask it to write a short story and we'll see how long. Now, rest to riches. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's a, definitely a short story. Okay, anyways. So um, give me, a, a, let, let's say give me, extend the, the, the story by, Rust to riches and road. So now it remembers what it said before, right? You can see that it's remembering what it said before and I'm asking it to include, okay. All right, so let's say, uh, uh, write two more sentences. So it's, it's remembering what it was talking about previously. And we can actually test that by asking it. We can actually ask it, what are we doing right now? And it should be able to tend me right now. We're collaborating to create a competitive narrative about Rusty, a car. So this is not a single text call where you get back. This is a chat call. It's remembering previous conversations. And I actually went ahead and put something in the code so that if I say show history, it should then, um, if this actually works, it should put the conversation history. There, there it goes. So it went ahead and printed the conversation history. So all I did is I'm just printing out the, what, what we're seeing in the previous. And then you can go ahead and you can um, check the JSON response of this. Um, I was debugging it. One of the interesting things that I have noticed with this is that to do chat, the conversation must be user model, user model, user model. If you do user, user model, or user, user model, model, you get an error back from the AI. It can't, it can't process that. It has to be one or the other. Now, one of the issues with that would be if you put this chat into, or if you put this like a chat bot into a chat room with more than one user, how does the bot deal with a conversation where it's user number one and user number two, they both send a message and then the bot has to respond to, to both of those. Well, it can't, it's going to crash on that because it has to be user model, user model. So to avoid that, what you can do is you could put like a space in or nothing in, in the place where there should have been a model and there wasn't a model, um, or wasn't a response from the AI or you could put two parts in, I'm, I'm guessing you could put two parts in where you could say user one part, user one says, uh, tell me a story about a car and user two says, tell me a story about a car that's blue and then have the model respond that way. So you can have more than one part. I haven't tested that, but it's a good theory that it might work. Um, again, let's, uh, now that you've seen it actually running, let's have a look at, um, at the code for it. Um, here we go. What we're doing first is again, we prompted the user. Then we create, we get the conversation history. So to get the conversation history, I'm passing it conversation history. And then this is one of the methods that I went ahead and created. And all it does is it, it starts a chat and it adds that JSON array here, right? and then it returns the, the actual history. So now we've got the conversation started. Then we send a message being what the user just typed. So this isn't part of the conversation history. This is a new message. So we send a new message. Then what I do is I go ahead and I append what the user just said to my conversation history. So I'm storing that this, this is a message that the user just said so that I have it for next time, right? Make sense? And then I get a response 
from the model, which is its last conversation, so this is what the model is saying, then I, I append that to the history as well, and then I output it to the user. So you're, every time it runs through the loop, it prompts the user, loads the conversation history, then it adds, sends the new message from the user over to the AI, and then it stores the user's message in conversation history and the, and the model's response in the conversation history. And I note that by this building conversation turn, uh, which is basically just builds the, the string here. So I'm calling them turns. So it's a turn, we're taking turns in a conversation. Well, that's all for today. And uh, I have one last surprise for you. Uh, and um, if, a, as a way of knowing whether or not you actually watched the whole thing, you know, you can wish me congratulations in the, in the comments below. But just before Christmas, um, Google gave me another GDE title. I am now a uh, provisionary uh, machine learning GDE. And uh, it, I guess it's a, a test title. They're, they're testing it and they want to see whether or not... Uh, how it works, but I am in, in a generative AI machine learning GDE. So that is, uh, that was, that was a very big accomplishment for me. I was very happy. Yes, it's, it's my third GDE title, but, um, it, each one of them means quite a lot to me that, that Google would, uh, would think what I do here is, is, uh, is useful. So, I don't know is what I do here useful. I, you know, I test stuff, I break stuff and, um, I try and help you so that you don't get stuck, but that's all for today. And I hope you guys have a, as always have a great day and, uh, we'll see you back for the next video. Bye.